Today I'm going to be showing you how to use classic quizzes in Canvas. First, you'll need to log in to Canvas and go to a course where you'd like to create a quiz or an exam, or also a survey. We're going to go to the course navigation menu on the left hand side and find quizzes. Once we've clicked on quizzes, we'll want to go ahead and click add a quiz, the blue button at the top right corner that says plus quiz. You'll have options between classic quizzes and new quizzes. Today I'm just going to be talking about classic quizzes. In another video, I'll explain new quizzes. I'm going to go ahead and click submit. In classic quizzes, we can name the quiz and we can insert information and details. Here in the details, you can change the header size. You can add horizontal lines to divide information. You can even record instructions through the Upload Record Media tab um, or pre-recorded videos for, through Course Media. You can add documents, images, whatever you like to this quiz area. You can use their new rich text editor just as you do to create a page or an assignment. Once you've added all of the details, you'll go down to this very first option called Quiz Type. In quiz types, you can make a practice quiz. This is a quiz that will grade and give the students a grade, but will not be connected to your gradebook. You can do a graded quiz in which the students can take, receive a grade, and that grade will automatically be sent to your gradebook. You can create a graded survey in which students get points for completing the survey, which are then logged directly into your gradebook or an ungraded survey where students are not graded, but they can take the survey and answer questions for you to review the results later. Let's go ahead and do a graded quiz so that we can explore the options. The next thing you can do is decide which assignment group you'd like it to go into. If you don't have an assignment group that you'd like yet, you can create it, but I'm going to go ahead and put it into an exam. Next, you have options here. You can shuffle answers. Note, you cannot shuffle questions with classic quizzes. You can in new quizzes with other updated functions, but not in classic quizzes. There are benefits to classic and new quizzes, but that's something you'll have to explore on your own after seeing this video and the new quizzes to decide which one is best for what you need. We're going to go ahead and click shuffle answers. Next, we can set a time limit. I'll just put a time limit here of 45 minutes. Next, you can decide if you'd like to allow multiple attempts. If you allow multiple attempts, you can tell Canvas which score to keep. You can have Canvas keep the highest score, the most recent score, or the average score for the students, and it will log whichever one you choose into your gradebook. Let's go ahead and select highest. You can also select how many attempts students get, one, two, three, or 10 attempts. Next, this box allows you to block or prohibit students from seeing the answers depending on how long you'd like it to. If you uncheck this box, then students will not get to see any of the results at all. If you do check the box, you'll get to choose when and how students review the answers. You can select only after their last attempt. This means that if you gave them three allowed attempts, students would only be able to see the correct answers after their third and final attempt. If you choose only once after each attempt, it will briefly show students their answers, correct or incorrect, maybe not the actual answers, but it will mark right or wrong on their answers once after each attempt or you can decide to let students see the correct answers in a window of time. You can select only after their last attempt and select a show correct answers beginning date and a high correct answers end date. So for example, if I start this on, let's say the quiz is going to close on Sunday the 23rd, maybe I want them to review the answers on Monday the 24th starting at 8 a.m. And I only want to allow them one day to review them. So maybe I will close this at 8 a.m. the next day so that they have 24 hours to review the answers. You can make this window as wide or as small as you want, but best practices say that you should give them ample time to review their answers. Therefore, a one hour time period really isn't sufficient unless you meet with those students live in class or over Zoom. 
Next, you have the option to show one answer at a time, or sorry, one question at a time, or to lock questions after answering. This can be really nice if you don't want students to go back and forth. If you'd like students to be able to review and change their answers, you won't want to select this. And if you'd like students to review all the questions before they begin, you might not want to select show one question at a time either. Up to you. Next, you can require an access code. This means you're going to create a password that you will then give to students. This is really great if you want students who come to class to take the quiz, um, or if you don't want to allow students who come late at a certain time to get it, maybe you give the password out at the beginning of class, or maybe you send the password out as an email, um, or so on and so forth. And this is a way that you can kind of limit which students are accessing. Now, if a student enters the password wrong, you may encounter some issues there, but you can create a password. Next, you can filter IP addresses, but we do not recommend filtering IP addresses, especially if you're teaching online. Many times students are accessing this material from different parts of the country or even in, up in different parts of the world. And so filtering the IP addresses can sometimes cause problems that you may not anticipate. Next, you can assign a due date to everyone, or you can even add an extension for one specific student. For example, if I want everyone to submit this by Sunday night at midnight, I can set that here. I can do an available from and until date. So let's say I don't want to open this exam until Friday morning because I'm going to give them the weekend to complete the exam. So I'll open it on Friday at 8 a.m. and it will be due on Sunday night at midnight. And maybe I want to go ahead and close it so that Canvas does not accept any other answers after the due date and it will submit at that time. Now, if I have a student who cannot take it and is going to get, you know, an extension, I can set a different due date for them. So maybe, maybe they were sick or something happened and I can give them a two day extension and add that here if I like, and you can add any students that you'd like there. So once you've set all of the parameters and the description, you can hit save if you like, or we can go ahead and answer questions. So once we've set all of our parameters, again, like I said, we can hit save, but we haven't created any questions yet. So if we save it and we're going to come back, maybe we want to create it, but we don't want to create the answers yet because we want it to show up on the student count, you know, the student's calendar, but maybe we haven't created the, the questions yet. So this might be why you would set parameters and explain the, the quiz or exam before actually creating uh, questions. Once you're ready, though, you can go back to create questions by clicking the edit, or if you need to go to quizzes again, your quiz will now show up in the quiz list, in which case you can just click on the name to make any edits. Once we click on the name, it will show us the, the basic page and we'll be able to go ahead and edit it. So we were in the first tabs originally with details. So we go through this, we can set all of those parameters and details like we just did. And next we can go to questions. Here we're going to add questions or question groups. If we wanna add a new question, we simply ask, click on new question. Next, this title zone is just for us, for reference points. Um, so maybe this is about vocabulary and maybe you have others that are essay or different styles. This is really a reference for you. Students do not see this title. Next, you'll choose the type. You have multiple choice, true, false, fill in the blank, fill in multiple blanks, multiple answers, multiple drop downs, matching, numerical answer, formula questions, essay questions, which you will have to manually grade. And so until you manually grade them, the grade will not be updated in your gradebook. File upload questions, again, will need to be manually graded. And then you also have text where you can give students instructions. So these are not actually questions. This is just to give students instructions or maybe to break different sections up and explain the new section. We'll go ahead and just select one that's true or false. Each one will adapt to you and you can choose which ones you like and play around with that. Next, you'll need to type the question into this box. And finally, you'll need to move the arrow if the question is true or false. The green arrow will indicate the correct answer for the student. Next, you can click on these little square boxes to add automatic feedback for the student if they get it right or wrong. Or you can give them prompts. Hopefully your prompts will be a little bit better than that. Once you're ready with this question, 
and for the comments, you'll go ahead and click done on the comments to save them. And then you'll click update question to save your question. If you don't hit update question, it will not save. And you'll come back very frustrated because your questions will be gone. The other option you have is to add questions from a question bank. To do this, we'll go ahead and click add a new question group. Here we can title the group and we can decide how many questions we want and how many points per question we'd like. Next, we're going to click this little magnifying glass that says link to a question bank. So I'll go ahead and click that and it will allow me to create to use questions that I have um, already created. So for example, if I quit, click on this one, I can select the bank and then I can go ahead and create it. And it says that one question worth one point each will be pulled from basic quiz QB1. So I'll go ahead and click create group and then I can preview what those questions are um, you know, from before if I'd like to. I can also click on this to open it and review it as well. Um, next, I can also find different questions from my banks or from different quizzes that I've made, in which case I can choose which question I would like to add and will add one individual question. It's important to note that a question group, you won't get to choose which question that pulls. So if you have five questions and you tell it to pull one, it will pull at random one question for, for that student. The next student who opens it, it will pull a different random question from that question pool. However, when you do find a question, it will add only one question, which is the same question for all students. So again, a question bank will allow the computer to vary your exam for each student. This way you can avoid some cheating and things like that as well. And I'll go over how to create question banks um, in another video, but this is how you can add them um, if you've already created the question banks uh, to your quiz. So once you have your questions, um, you can click this box up here, show question details or not. That will show the answer and it'll show the correct one for you so that you can do a quick check. If you need to change the point value, you'll notice here that the default is one point. You can click the little pencil and in the top right corner, you can change the point value. Um, and again, you'll want to make sure you click update questions. Um, and here again, you can click the pencil and you could come in here and change the point value in the top right corner and click update question. Once you're finished with your quiz, you want to go ahead and save and publish. It's important to note that students will not be able to open the quiz until that particular time available from here. It'll show you when the answers will be available as well. So if we wanted to preview this, we could go ahead and preview for the student. And here it'll it'll show the questions. And here you'll notice it pulled one of those five questions from my question bank, um, which, you know, was any number <laughs> between uh, between this here. So you know, uh, I would really hope that you create better questions, of course. Um, but then, you know, students can submit the quiz and, and view that there and, and see, um, you know, score for this attempt and, and whatnot. So you can kind of notice it there. Something else, once you've published it that you'll notice, you'll get these nice items on the right hand side. So if it's not published, you won't be able to see moderate quiz. So if I go ahead and I, and I refresh the page, you'll see it says keep editing, but it doesn't say moderate. So I, in order to be able to moderate the quiz and add extra time or extra attempts for students, especially those who are registered with DSS, you'll need to publish the quiz. So again, this is why this available from date is really, really important because as soon as you publish this quiz, if you don't have an available from date or an available until date, then students will be able to immediately take that quiz. So in order to avoid students being able to access the quiz or exam before you want them to, make sure you set up an available from date. And that's basically an opening date for that quiz. That means students will not even be able to open or preview this quiz until that date passes. And so once you've published it, you'll be able to moderate this quiz. So you'll have a student and all their names here, and you'll be able to see their attempts. And this little pencil in the far right corner, you'll be able to add extra attempts or even extra time. Um, so here everyone gets 45 uh, minutes and so you could add an extra 15 minutes to them if you need to um, or, or what you'd like to do with that as well. Um, you can also manually unlock the quiz for the next attempt if you've set parameters for that. So we'll go ahead and save and here it'll automatically update. It says gets 15 minutes on each attempt and there's four attempts left now because we increased it for this student. So again, if you're trying to moderate um, your quiz, you'll, you'll need to make sure that it's published 
um, before you can make any changes for any particular students. Now, once it is published, you can still edit the question. You can come in here, you can add more, you can change it and all that. Until one student takes your quiz or exam officially, you'll be able to edit the questions with no problem. Um, after you have one student take it, it will prompt you and say, hey, someone has taken this, what, you, what would you like to do? Um, and then you can follow that prompt there as well. Um, another thing you can do um, in the, with the three dots on the side of your quiz is you can show a rubric, you can preview it, um, you can let particular students take that quiz early, so maybe you can unlock it. You can show your student quiz results, so if you want to see an overall um, you know, score um, and how your students did overall, you can do that as well. You can also message students who scored less than or more than something. So if you want to message students who scored over 90% to congratulate them, you can do that. Or you have uh, message students who haven't taken it yet to be like, hey, don't forget to take it. You can do that as well. You can delete it. You can send it to other faculty. So if you are creating a quiz or an exam that other faculty in your department are going to be using in other sections of that course, you can send it to them. You can also copy it to other courses or other future courses if you'd like to. And you can share it to Commons if you want to make it available to everyone across campus to moderate, change, or use as well. So this has been an extensive overview of quizzes and how you can add questions to them and all these nice little details about it. So I hope it's been useful to you and I wish you a wonderful day.